Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome back to definitely an SMB Hardcore World, my now single player Hardcore World. Last episode, we showed off the start of these mountains here in front of us, and more importantly, I believe if we dig down right here, definitely not right here. Nope, nope, did I do it? Oh, I was off by one. Oh, I was so close. Our brand new storage room. I wanna be finishing this thing up today as well, my friends. I want to go mining for some netherite. I know it's been a while. We've been waiting for quite a long time to get our netherite gear ready to go. And man, I've been doing enough digging to not want to do any more digging with diamond tools any further. So today we're hopefully going to be going to make a giant explosion in the nether. I purposely waited for a while to be able to do this one because first we have three shulker boxes full of sand right here. And then if I use my pro elytra skills, haha, look at that. We should have quite a lot of gunpowder at our creeper farm down here. I'm hearing the hissing of creepers dying on top of the magma blocks, and that is a fantastic sound. In between episodes, that's quite a good, that's a good amount of it. Thought I'd get us started with some TNT. But in between episodes, I spent a good while actually lining up the caves around our base. Nothing too eventful happened, so I decided to leave that out of this one here. Now, in regards to these mountains up here, this is something that I mentioned we're going to be working a lot on streams as we're going throughout and building this place up. And that led me to a question here for you folks. Do you want to see in every single one of the hardcore series episodes that we do a small update on the mountains or should we save it for like a bi-weekly so every other week we would come through and do a big time lapse of all of the block placing that has happened in regards to these mountains let me know in the comments below what you think we should do on that front little bits here and there or do we save it for a giant epic mountain update in some video so we might see some of the background stuff happening throughout this episode i'm not going to do a time lapse of what's happening on over here because i want to know from you all but anyways folks it is time for us to get going on the storage room i'm going to go gather up a few resources mainly some spruce wood because we used it all making chests and while i'm doing that you all go ahead and click that like button down below and we'll get down there for some building like buttons have been clicked spruce logs have been chopped we've all done our chores for the day and my friends it's time to get to building up this section over here i'm thinking for now we're just gonna act as if we're carrying the same tunnel going all the way down here then just broken out into the wall instead of where it would have normally have been just granite going all the way across is we're gonna have another little bit of an archway down here that'll bring ourselves all the way down underground into this section first we got to deal with the upper section here to make it look like it's actually something that would be part of the tunnel so I wanted to continue on these archways that we had inside of the tunnel itself. They're fairly simple to get in here. It just requires a bunch of trap doors and stairs. And then on top of that, we're going to need some lanterns, which thankfully we have unlimited lanterns as we have unlimited emeralds. Librarian villagers are the best, in my opinion. Absolutely love librarian villagers. Then I was thinking to bring in more of this granite that we have, we could use our polished granite slabs going all the way throughout here as we had normally. That one right there is actually gonna have to be a lever so we can flip this little guy back and forth. And can we get you onto there for now and you can maybe just sit? Please don't go anywhere. He's going somewhere. I don't even want to make it look like there's something intended to be down here. More that they came down, it's like a secret hideout underground where we're storing all of our resources, our loot, and everything like that. That'd be really, really cool. But then, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring that up here, and we're going to start stepping down with some polished granite stairs. We can turn this into our apocalypse bunker of sorts, I guess would be the idea we're going for. I don't really know quite yet what I want to do with these walls, but I don't want them to be that flat. And I do want to figure out a way we can incorporate a bunch of this spruce wood into here. But what I was thinking for this doorway, or at least the archway up here, is we could just do spruce trap door, spruce trap door, then stair, stair, trap door, trap door, and then little guy right in there. Because we're going to have some cobblestone along the roof, to be able to get the same effect that we have right in here. Well, I've been retrofitting this tunnel down here to bring it into the style that we've done before. I got to thinking, and I was thinking that right here could actually be a better place to drop us down instead of all the way down here because that's avoiding about 10 extra blocks of fall damage, which probably is a good idea. Let's patch that up so nobody can fall down on top of us while we're working in this area. But I think we could take this up and create maybe like a market square somewhere. I don't really know quite yet, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Because we're going to have a false door, like a floor piston door, where it just like open up the ground below you. You fall down there, land in this section, 
then you can walk right down in the storage room or fly with an elytra i think it might be able to work after that we've got all the polished granite stairs in here and now i think what i need to do is probably raise the ceiling up by one more so take these guys all back an extra block and then down here the ceiling is definitely going to be coming up a lot more than we have currently eventually we're gonna have to get that piston door in there as well i don't quite know where i want to wire it up yet i'm almost thinking like a lever on the wall can open and close it for us but right now what i'm thinking or what i know i want to do is come back in here and add in a bunch of this granite along the wall so it's gonna be a recessed back one and then on top of these sections i was thinking it'd be kind of fun to do a little bit of cobble so can we do one two three and we're gonna do slabs on top of all of those so it's still mob proof in this area because it's not gonna be the brightest of places and if we do a wood beam right there and then we have one two and three and then we have another wood beam oh that would be absolutely perfect love it when an accidental plan comes together like that adding in the last little section for the granite in the walls here i think we're gonna have enough of this stuff and we've got to figure out what the heck i'm doing with the ceiling add in a few lights here so it keeps it clean and clear for us but i believe when we take an elytra we're gonna hit the lanterns of course and then i was like maybe we can fly all the way down through the door but it doesn't look like it the lanterns are gonna kind of get in the way there I think I'm gonna try and mimic the same idea for the ceilings up here and just make it a little bit different by making it look like these middle ones of the cobblestone are actually just a full block, but like in between. To make a little bit more sense here, that's what it'll look like in the end. So it still has that curve to it and it's still stepping down at the exact same rate. Let's get that floating stone out of there. Nope, it lives there forever now. Great, now that our staircase into the storage room is ready to go. I think before we start decorating the area down here, I want to open it up a little bit more and then also figure out what the heck we are doing with this piston door because right now it is um it's just a line of di diorite probably not the best doorway we could have i know that would keep out some certain people but i don't think it's going to keep out the creepers which is what i'm mostly scared of getting into the storage room here so let me do a little bit of research and see what i can't come up with for a three by three piston door and i'll be back with y'all when you aren't a redstone expert sometimes it's okay to admit it and take somebody else's design so we're going to be using one by mumbo and i saw the zombies out here i thought there might be a few friends when we were leaving that door so uh, we're all good let's hope that there's nobody else out here for this, we're gonna need quite a few different things. 10 observers to get ourselves started over here so we can start to make a few things. We need a few different droppers, it looks like. But first, we're running into a bit of a new problem here, and that is the fact that I still don't have any uh, iron, so, and I need to make a bunch of pistons. That's gonna be a problem. Finally, we need two repeaters, and hopefully we have some slime around here somewhere. I think, hey, look at that, we got tons of it. Perfect, the slime farm's really been working hard for us. And there we have it, 10 sticky pistons. Now for the little bit of that issue I was mentioning earlier is the items filters go right there and right there, and I can't move those any further over. I chose this design specifically because it only needs to go down at most to there which is still gonna cause a little bit of an issue seeing as that's gonna connect to that redstone. So I might have to bring us up another block, but I feel like that would look really weird, especially on this side, because right now we can already barely see the doorway. Uh, what can I do to make the redstone not go down that way? If anybody has any ideas, let me know in the comments below. The problem is, is I know I can place a block on top of that, but we also need the redstone to go out in that direction as well. Otherwise it's gonna mess with the item filters. So, uh, man, I don't know what to do in here. Can we move it all this way by one, maybe? We could have the door right here, and then it just goes back that way. That could, wait. <laughs> wow, let's figure out how to make this super complex thing instead of moving it all over by one block. Yeah, that, mm, okay, well, we're gonna do it right here instead. That, my friends, was big brain play if I've ever seen one right there, and I was thinking for this vault door, we could use another other than the block of gold because that'll just show how rich we are and we have so many blocks of gold that really doesn't even matter. And there it is, folks, and I'll leave a link down in the description below for the video I used for this one, if I can remember. If I didn't, please somebody yell at me if you want to know how to do this thing. It's not my own design, so I want to give credit where I can, but if we flip this lever, and I didn't do it right. There we go. It looks like I had just a single block missing in there. We were missing that block, which I don't know. Somehow the redstone signal goes through that thingy and all the way over and it does that. And now I believe I can just take a signal out of that. It just needs a face into that granite block up there and we can move it wherever we want. So we could do a lever right over here, for example. First and foremost, I got to figure out how the heck I'm going to hide this thing because right now it's it's ugly it's very very ugly i don't quite maybe we do like a little pond we can have a little pond and a little pond or something i don't know why water feature sounds nice down here the inside's looking pretty solid from over here i think that'd be totally fine very dark entrance is okay with me i believe it should be all be mob proof maybe up here it's gonna not be mob proof once we close it 
Uh, I should have thought that through better. I can't get in there to check it right now. Yeah, that's that's a my mistake right there. But I think we can do something like that. And then I don't have any other resources on me. It's time to do a little bit of decorating work around here. So let's see what we can come up with. You know, I literally just went to record a clip and all of the bees went in there. I was saying that I was going to be spending a little bit of time up here above ground, getting some fresh air, hanging out in our greenhouse with all my lovely bees before we dive back into the cave because I've got a weird idea. This right here, the honeycomb block. I have never used it before in my entire life playing Minecraft, but I've got an idea on what we can do today with it. What we're gonna be building down here, folks, is what I'm calling the holding chambers. I feel like it's that stereotypical thing you have to do in your hardcore world once you've been around for quite a while, is well, you have to create a holding chamber and put some dangerous mobs inside of it. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today. I've got a great idea in mind for how we can make this thing work. And inside of here, you can see me starting to create the shape for these holding chambers. The plan is gonna to be to put some scary mobs standing right here. I'm thinking creepers. Maybe if we're feeling really spicy, we can get some supercharged creepers in the future, but I was planning on bringing it all the way up here. And then we can go all the way around this again with more of those honeycomb blocks. And we've got our little test tube design back here. I think, however, I'm gonna want to replace all of these up here with some more of the polished granite so it's more consistent throughout. Both holding chambers are now in place. We can do a mob on that side and we can do a mob on this side. I'm thinking we can get rid of those and add in some warped logs up here being the warped stem. And I like that little bit of the extra texture that that has right there. You can see it's got a little bit of an animation to it. Parts of it glow and then change all over the place. And I think it's so cool for like a techie block. And there we go. I think this is going to work out really well. Added andesite into the floors here to make a bit more tree. Is that still, it's still mob safe. So we're good there. Added some chains and pillars into the corners. Just, I don't know why it looks like it might be some gears or things controlling the test tubes. And then it may look like this one's actually connected right there. So that'll close the vault door for us. And then we can pull it back up and we are good to go in and out. Got the roof detail down a little bit there as well. And ooh, I forgot one thing. That'd be adding in a few spruce stairs right over here. I think this will look really nice being able to merge everything in together. And then on this side, just so it's not even with those trap doors, I'm going to extend it down an extra trap door. That is looking absolutely awesome down here. I love this entrance into our storage room. The next part that we have to tackle here is this. But as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to get netherite today. And I would rather get netherite before we mine this out than after it. So let me go get a few things together and we're going to be jumping into the nether here and doing some big, big explosions and hopefully finding some netherite down there or ancient debris. We find ancient debris and then we get the netherite. My friends, it is time to go to the nether and say goodbye to this diamond armor and get some netherite armor for ourselves. I'm so very excited for this. All of the gunpowder and sand was able to bring us almost four stacks of TNT, which I'm hoping will be able to get us a lot of stuff. The goal today is 40 ancient debris so that we can get pretty much all of our existing tools and armor upgraded to netherite, which I think would be absolutely amazing. I'm going to prioritize armor first, though. Now, I'm not going to be using the bed method because I've used that in the past before because everybody told me it was is way more efficient and everything like that and it saves on resources blah 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 but I managed to kill myself doing it and I don't want to have any risk of dying or at least uh, lower the risk of dying. You know, TNT being the safe bet, that says something about it, right? <laughs> Into the nether now and I've been playing with fog on it in the overworld and it makes the gold farm look so ominous. But what we want to do here is actually drop down way, way down underground in the nether. The lower we can get underground, I believe, is the higher spawn rates for ancient debris. Now, as we're going through the process of getting netherite, I had a question for y'all, and it is about challenges within the hardcore Minecraft world. Obviously, kind of getting your full netherite gear is something very important in the hardcore mindset. And what I'm thinking first and foremost is we have Basalt Delta over there. We have Giant Lava Lake over there. So let's dig down. And what direction is this? We want to explode things going to the south. Okay, back onto the topic, though. Inside of the world so far, we have managed to raid a woodland mansion and get totems and dying, which is absolutely awesome. So thankful for that. We've managed to kill the Ender Dragon. We've managed to get Elytra. We've managed to build quite a few big farms and everything. We've got our huge builds going on at home. And for my list of stuff that we still have to do, it comes down to raiding a bastion, getting wither skeleton skulls so we can summon the wither. And then I believe we could go raid a sea temple or ocean monument, whatever the heck those things are called, and get 
a lot of stuff out of those because we can fight the Elder Guardian, get some sponges, and get our Prismarine blocks. But that leads me to a question for you all. What other challenges can we face inside of the hardcore world to kind of say that we've done everything needed inside of the hardcore world? Oh, we're down a little low here. We want to be up on, I believe we're going to go with Y level 12, which is right here. The Wither is the next one on my radar of something really important to get because I would love to have a beacon for some big mining projects as I think that'd be extremely helpful to have. But I also don't really want to die fighting the wither oh or suffocating to death that'd be great too so that brings me another question for the wither fight do we want to cheese it using the end portal and there's black star everywhere bummer do we want to cheese it using the end portal method where we can trap it inside of bedrock or do we fight it legit we'll get the wither skeleton skulls in hey there we go this looks like a good tunnel already anybody else around here any other friends i really want to be able to finish all of the builds that i've going on namely the mountains and our village and the castles uh, if we make it that far we make it that far wow there's a lot of black stone this way and another ancient debris sweet we haven't even exploded anything yet and we're on fire that's fun <laughs> But yeah, let me know what you all think about these different mobs and how we should tackle them. Should we do it the legit methods or cheese it and make sure that we don't die doing it? Or how do we go about all those different things? Always there's a little bit of a risk in it. But I think it could be kind of worthwhile to maybe get the beacon and not die because I don't want to lose the world quite yet. But you know what? Let me know what y'all are thinking on that one, okay? But in the meantime, we have a giant tunnel filled with TNT that we need to explode. And uh, we definitely need to make a way for us to be able to run away after we light it so that we don't get exploded as well. Just for the extra level of safety, taking the gold safety helmet off and putting the diamond one on, and uh, let's do this thing. Right like that, we light the TNT and we run all the way down here and pick up the shield. That was quite sad. I was really hoping the whole chain would go, and it looks like it did not. I have a few fire resist potions on me. Unfortunately, most are splash resist fire potions, so they're not going to be super effective. But they'll be able to get us somewhere at least, and uh, I really should have done that farther down. I lost my staircase. Now, we're going to run into a lot of lava down here, but if we just find the source blocks at the top of it and we get rid of those, all the lava should disappear. It does flow very, very quickly, so we want to be careful of that. Oh, there's some ancient debris in the ceiling. Look at that. Oh, this is working. I love it. There we go. Keep going. Oh, there's more ancient debris down there. All of that gravel has fallen. Holy cow. And it's disappeared off into the fog, and I think it stopped. The best part about this whole thing is this tunnel we've made so far was barely a full stack of TNT. So uh, we've got a lot more exploding we can do. I'm probably going to be missing some ancient debris in the ceiling as we go, but we'll be coming back down this tunnel so we can get it then. So from this tunnel going all the way down here to all the way down there, well, that's actually the full extent the TNT was able to do. But we managed to get seven and I already have one ancient debris at home. So that brings us to a total of eight, which means we have two pieces of netherite gear ready to go. Well, this tunnel here is about twice as long with almost two stacks of TNT. So if we've got in nine so far, hopefully we'll be in the 20s by the end of this. And let's run all the way over here. I do love watching TNT explode in Minecraft. It is one of the most satisfying things in this game. I absolutely love this. I'm very happy to say the grand total of our ancient debris mining mission has yielded 36 more ancient debris and we have the one more at home so that's 37. We're just three shy of being able to get every tool that we have fully upgraded to netherite which i think will be good to call it here for today we can you know leave the shovel or the axe or something like that without now time to actually smelt this stuff down i don't want to use a regular furnace because you know this is the big stuff here this is the most important thing we could possibly smelt inside of our minecraft world so my friends with that we need a crafting table and some smooth stone actually in the end there and then we can make ourselves a blast furnace oh that's gonna be good oh hello skeleton it's daytime what are you doing here and goodbye inside of here we created a blacksmith forge for ourselves to create our netherite stuff in the future and now my friends it's finally time to use that i'm gonna replace the stone brick right here with our blast furnace and there it is oh i love this block i want to use it more ancient debris in the top and coal in the bottom and that's gonna be smelting down and i gotta go get some gold our blast furnace has finished smelting away folks and look at all of those netherite scraps that we got in here and i'm gonna close that down so we don't get anything disturbing us coming over to the crafting table 
we can craft up nine netherite ingots. Oh, that feels good. All we got to do from there, first and foremost, is I'm going to throw my inner chest down here, grab the toolbox, and we'll be able to take a few things out of here, namely the chest piece. But we've got one, two, three, and four pieces right here that are all going to need the netherite for ourselves. And now we can pick five more. The sword for one for sure. I'm thinking a silk touch pickaxe our regular shovel and the ax. And then, you know what? I have this broken down pickaxe here as well. We can go ahead and repair those. You know what? They take less durability to repair right now. Let's go do that first. First, armor back on. Now, the reason why we're doing this here is because the biggest change between netherite and diamond, so upgrading is they have another 25% durability on them. Like this guy, you can see that out of 1561 down there, it gets moved to out of like five, like 2000 something. Can't remember what the exact number is. We'll see it soon, but it's worthwhile to repair this now. Save ourselves a few pumpkins and melons. And back to the important task of uh, getting a little bit more OP now. I think we do the armor first because it looks so dang cool. Oh, netherite chest piece. Feels good, man. Feels good. There's the legs, the boots, the helmet. Cover me in debris. I'm feeling very strong. I'm feeling very strong and very tough. Maybe worthy enough to go take on a wither. Maybe. Of course, we gotta do the tools here as well. Why does our sword only have sharpness four on it? We gotta upgrade that one. Uh, taking care of this pickaxe right there. We got another pickaxe. We've got the shovel and we've got the ax. I love the look of these tools. I know it's kind of a contested thing, but I love like the purpley look to it. I don't see how they look like stone at, at all. Oh my god, all of my toolsmith villagers have been converted to zombies. Um, we don't have toolsmith villagers anymore, I guess. So the reason why I was looking at those guys is I was walking over here to check up on this furnace where I've been smelting down a bunch of glass for the next step in today's episode. We've got to dig a absolutely massive hole under our storage room so we can create an amazing foggy glass floor. So folks, while I got all this glass down here, let's go dig out a big old hole. By making the pickaxe go. Fine, I'm stopping that. We just dug a giant hole down here. I don't know what else to say, everybody. We took a hole down about 16, 17 blocks into the ground and filled the bottom with a bunch of torches. It looks great. And there we have it. I've been prepping quite a few resources for ourselves down here, and it's time to head on into the caves where we've got, in this one, there we go, all the orange carpet and orange dye we could need. Started adding some of the carpet down below to make sure it works, and the smoke from the torches does not come through, which is amazing. We can toss this yellow dye in there, just gather it up too, and here's all of our glass. I really hope that's enough glass to fill in this thing. Taking some of our orange dye over here, I'll give you all a quick example of how this is gonna work out before we go ahead and time lapse it out because it'll look absolutely amazing, but we wanna fall all the way down here. And the way this works is if we apply a glass right there, then we do one right here, 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 and so on, every other block going all the way up, you can come all the way to the top here and it just looks like orange fog going all the way down. You can barely see the carpet down there. So if we get all of the light with the torches here, it's gonna look like this base area is glowing all the way up here and it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. I'm so very excited for it. But first we gotta cover the torches with this very painful task of placing a single carpet on top of every single one and making sure we click in the right spot. And there we go, the glowy orange carpet floor is all the way in, my friends, and I think it's time that we go ahead and kick this off into good, old-fashioned, extremely satisfying time-lapse mode and place in all of the glass. I am sure with YouTube compression, you can barely see this down here, but we more or less have a hologram floating down here, spelling out FWIP. I did it on the multiple layers, as you saw in the time lapse, and I absolutely love this. It's so 
foggy and you can barely see down into it and i just think it's perfect i didn't want it to very clearly say just flip across here i wanted some to be like walking through and be like oh whoa, wait a says something what's that say down there let's go ahead and look at it oh my gosh it says his name wow he really thinks highly of himself you know that that type of stuff it totally makes sense but folks that is all i got time for in today's episode thank you all so very much for watching we've got our full nether egg gear the storage room is more or less finished just got to do all of the filters down here get this thing set up which i don't know how to label it yet if you got ideas on that let me know down in the comments below but click that like button if you have not already subscribe if you're brand new and my friends i will catch you on the flip side